For more on the state government policies that are pushing up the cost of living and what to do about them, I'm delighted to have with me Deputy Leader of the Queensland LNP, Jared Blay. Jared, thank you so much for joining me tonight. How are Queensland Labor's policies pushing up the cost of living for all Queenslanders? Well, thanks, Amanda. It's great to be on your program. And hello to all your wonderful listeners. You're doing a fantastic job on, uh, on the Sunday program. Look, it, it seems the Labor government in Queensland are the only ones that don't know there's a cost of living crisis <laughs> in Queensland. You've got ministers jet-setting around the state. You've got ministers gleefully acknowledging billions of dollars of blowouts, like the Olympics I talk about. Mm. And... Queenslanders are the ones struggling to put fuel on the table, struggling to put fuel in their car and struggling to build a house or, or, or afford uh, a rental because of the housing crisis. You've had eight years of Anastasia, not releasing enough land supply, so we've got the housing crisis we've got. And everything this government does, Amanda, is so urgent. They have a housing round summit. They, have a sum they always have summits and they think <laughs> that's going to be the end to you know, all the issues. It's not. This has been coming for years now, and the only ones who haven't been listening to Queenslanders about their struggles is the Queensland Labor government. Can you give me some examples about how we can correct some of these problems? What are some examples of the way the LNP is looking to shift policy in a way that would make a difference? Well, you look at the crime crisis we've got in Queensland at the moment. Now, Queenslanders need to know that if a suburb is continually under attack from juvenile offenders, which we've got many suburbs in Queensland mm. that just continually get their cars stolen, their homes broken into, insurance companies look at that. Yeah, and guess what happens? True. Insurance rises. So we've got people coming to us saying, why are our insurance costs skyrocketing? Why is business insurance skyrocketing? Mm. There's things like um, the uh, building codes that the Queensland government have done with the unions that are adding 30% to construction costs. That's obscene. Now, who's paying for that? You not are. Anast you, look, <laughs> we all we are. are. We not, all are. Not Anastasia. Yeah. Not the Queensland government. It's the taxpayer. Yep. And that's why it is so frustrating. And I think Queenslanders are starting to feel really angry and sad when they see the Premier, for instance, announcing the GABA redevelopment mm. that's gone from a $1 billion to $2.7 billion, and she's so happy about it. And yet... <laughs> No one can explain the blowout. Well, Queenslanders need help. Yeah. And that's why if we solve the law and order issue, insurance rates will go down. If we fix the roads, maintain the roads, the uh, fruit and veggie costs will come down. If we maintain our baseload power stations, maybe electricity can be provided cheaper. But this is not happening. Finally, um, I see a government that's desperate for dollars. Their budget is in such a terrible state and Cameron Dick seems to be trying to rip cash from anywhere, any industry, any Queenslander he can find. How bad is the budget situation for those who don't follow it as closely as you? Yeah. And um, how long is it going to take to turn that around? Well, we're talking about nearly $130 billion of debt in the state of Queensland. So have a guess at how long that will take. And this government has had no no sign of being frugal with their money expenditure. Look at the blowouts, the Cross River Rail blowouts, the Olympic infrastructure blowouts, everything they touch is blowing out. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. Queensland is paying the price for that. Well, it's um, one of those things people haven't always appreciated um, that when governments don't live within their means, it manifests as inflation, it yeah. manifests as higher cost of living. How can we help Queenslanders understand the importance of having a government that's prepared to live within its means? Well, I think Queenslanders are now becoming to understand that. I think when they see the blowouts, the budget blowouts, the road blowouts, the fact they're um, putting trains, that they've got the tracks down, but they didn't order the trains for Cross River Rail, for instance. I think Queenslanders are now, <laughs> are now starting to say, okay, what's going on here? They've lost, they've lost the plot in the Queensland government. 